Hello everyone and welcome by the Orchid Saga and today we're going to uh, repot the first three orchids that I did uh, get on my uh, Landsbergen visit in the Netherlands and uh, so yeah I'm starting off with three with the Odontoglossum types well I believe those are Odontoglossum types and um, I also will do a little project so just keep watching if you are interested in what I'm up to this time so let's start on potting them. Well, actually, we're first going to do something different this time as well. So I basically have two different things for this video. So let's start quickly before I uh, uh, cannot stop rambling anymore. <laughs> so what I uh, will do now in this uh, section, this part of the video is preparing these guys for being up potted in a new, completely new system. In this case, uh, self-watering. They've been potted in, I think, a sort of cocoa husk, not husk, cocoa husk uh, material stuff, something like that. Probably a bit of bark in there, and I see a new growth here. I'm not sure if that is growing. Oops, there goes a bit of bark. But um, what I also noticed is uh, bulbs uh, getting shriveled. So this one is uh, yet yeah, staked, but it's still very. Uh, wobbly in a pot you probably can see that like this I know yeah it's also heavy so I'm not completely sure maybe it has enough roots but what I do see is that it's uh, dehydrating itself and what I used to do was cutting the flower spike off so the orchid gets uh, keeps all the energy for uh, starting to grow again I sort of do the same thing, but a little bit different this time. So therefore, I would like to show you what I do and make a little bit of room, because we are sometimes we talk about the flower spikes and that the orchid uh, does store energy in that spike as well. So I had a thought about it, and I thought, well, I want to stop this from blooming because this that costs a lot of energy, and we just discussed that this one can use the energy for in the bulbs. Um, but also we have the energy in the flower spike. So what I will do is cut off the buds and the flowers, but not the spike. So I hope by doing that, that this and uh, the, the orchid will get the energy back into the bulbs again and make it a little bit easier, a little bit quicker, the process uh, for the orchid to start new growths and new roots. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a few, and then we have a, a uh, over a look uh, about the the uh, all the three of them. So I'm just going to cut these. I leave the branches as well, and so something like this. I hope that was yes, that was in the screen. Let's do another one. So just cut off the bo the buds, like I said and leave the rest. Now the orchid has nothing here anymore to push energy in. It just stops because the buds are gone. And also I will do the same with the flowers. And like I said, hopefully it will then start to get in the growing mode a bit quicker. So I will do all of them, also the, the ones in the back, and um, then I will back and we ha will have a last look because they do not look as pretty, of course, and it's, uh, especially in the beginning when I start growing orchids, it was a very hard process, but I have to do it because I want to save the plants, and especially this one is dehydrating, and I will. I want to stop that, I want this one to be happy again, and to start uh, feeding itself again. So uh, that's why I chose this plant, plant for this plant. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little bit sad, I know, and like I said, I had to... Uh, Get used to this uh, very, uh, very much. So it did take me quite a, quite a long time, I should say, uh, when I started growing orchids, and um, and especially to transfer them in cell watching. But it works. It works way better in some cases. I'm not always cutting uh, flower spikes or blooms, but with odontoglossum types, Botaniopsis, the the bit more fussy ones, generally speaking. Not always the case, but generally speaking, um, I cut off uh, flowers in this case, or flower spikes. With a Phenoliopsis, for example, I most of the times do not do it, because they can take it a bit more easily. 
especially when they have new routes starting and especially they, if they have new routes in a pot etc they, they they are a bit easier to uh, get into the new system at least for me so this is uh, what we have yeah once again I know it's a bit sad and this is how the orchids now look as you can see they still have their green spikes but without the blooms and I uh, you know one day I will be happy again about uh, about this because then they have their new blooms in a new setup and that's what we uh, we all do this for. What I did do before I did cut off was give them a, a little hint, a little description on a pot of the colors of the blooms. So I now know, still know which one is which. Um, most of the times I think I, I always remember it but that's not the case so therefore I uh, do stickers on the pots. And I will wait a little bit and then I will start uh, repotting that, uh, these guys. Uh, but in this video I will now start repotting them. But this is a uh, pre-filmed, uh, so um, I would, uh, yeah, because I, was, I wanted to show you guys what I now, now try and if I see any difference if they are starting to uh, take up the spikes, etc. So let's move on to the next part. So actually it's uh, the next day because I had a thought about it and it was what I thought what was I thinking I just want them uh, out of the pot and see what we are uh, dealing with as I do usually. So um, I will uh, take them out because I think they uh, need something fresh and uh, I can give that to them. I have a complete new setup for them in mind. <laughs> so let's uh, start with getting them out of the pot. And see what we are dealing with and I started with this one we discussed this one this one is uh, shriveling a little bit so I'm very curious to see what uh, how this one is looking root wise yeah first thing I see is a lot of dead roots and that was something I was afraid of so it's that coconut nusk, not husk, that's <laughs> coconut husk stuff. They have a few alive roots, luckily, so I try to save them. Something to work with. And we have a branching root system there, a new root tip. So that's uh, very beautiful. Let me uh, try to zoom in. So we can see the root bulb a little bit closer. And here is that root, that branching root I was talking about. I'm not completely sure if this is one plant in the pot or maybe two. I'm not, uh, like I said, not sure yet. So we will check that. And we have a moss bulb here as well. You can see. So that's going out because it's. Let me smell. Yeah, it's not not incredibly bad. I must admit, but. It's going over. So yeah, I have a lot of dead roots, but these ones are still alive. So that's very nice, obviously. We can see here where the root is um, visible, the vellum is gone. So this one is probably rotting. At least uh, the vellum. <coughs> Take the sheets off. There you go. And have a look. No uh, new growths yet on this bulb, but this one was the blooming one, so that was to be expected. I have a new growth here. With no new roots yet, as far as I can see. I will take this on the sink and we will uh, revisit again. So I'm back. I did uh, rinse it under the tap and this is what I'm left with. Not that much roots and most of them are very brown. Most of the times that means that they are uh, dead. But not always. So I'm going to remove as much of the dead roots as I can. We have new roots starting here on this arc, those lighter parts. So I'm try sl very uh, slowly and carefully. I try to get a whoops, 
get um, the sheets off because they have the tendency to start to rot which we don't like obviously so there we go I don't want to break the roots of course and it's, just, it's an eye there but doing nothing at the moment I think but maybe it will wake up and start to grow so let me uh, focus on the roots left here yeah we can uh, cut off some of these well actually this is this is makes it uh, harder because whoops, I think yeah this one is still viable but it looks I'm sorry on top of my finger there the root is broken but here this tip is branching I hope you can see it I hope you can see it like this so yeah I'm going to leave leave that one I think yeah it feels kind of firm if this one had quite a root system I will cut it off but I now try to use every root that can uh, start supporting this orchid again so I will not take it off and even though these are very dark they are very hard and sturdy still at least some of them so what I do the ones that are rotting off I pull the filament off so I have as a little material in the pot that can start uh, rotting yes I didn't expect this but these are still and this one is branching as well there on top of my finger a little branch so yeah I'm going to leave it like this let me check if these are sharing the same rhizome yes they do so this is a plant with probably whoops the spikes are still on <laughs> I keep forgetting it with two direction of growth which is beautiful we have a very small a smaller bulb here and it's connected to this one and this one and this one is connected to this one etc so I like that I really like that so I will grab my um, hydrogen peroxide quickly I have it here in my cabinet oops there we go and I will uh, spray this root, this root system fairly well in between the bulbs I like to spray you never know what's hiding there if any are pests are hiding I don't want them of course so spray it fairly well yes I hear it fuzzing and doing its job so this is uh, the first one I will put it here so I can uh, the hydrogen can do its thing let me uh, clear up my uh, gloves I will use some alcohol and the scissors and I will be back so there is the second one and this is the one with a fairly long spike and a bit of bronzy colored uh, flowers so um, I will take that one out of the pot and this one has two new growths currently growing so that's very nice of course let me try to get it the stake out there we go and now we can look at we have one new growth there and one there so that's a beautiful start but this one is very loose wibbly in a pot so let's have a look at the root system what we're dealing with Sort of same situation I think I think they are alive most of the roots but they are not they're doing fairly well a little bit discolored so I'm checking I'm squeezing with my fingers and if they uh, feel firm they are still alive and they are feeling firm quite a lot of them so I'm I'm happy that we have uh, some roots that can branch out 
and get a, a new root system started for this orchid, which is beautiful, of course. But I think if I would have left them there in there, I probably would kill the roots fairly quick. So I'm happy I did take them out of the pot. Didn't wait for the blooms to do uh, to go over. Just cut them off and first try to get that orchid to grow again. That's very very important, uh, at least for me. I, I, I of course I want to keep the orchid. So therefore I try to uh, repot it in the best health it uh, can be in. So, And once again I'm going to rinse it uh, underneath the tap and we will be right back. And here we are again. And look what I found also on this one. Let me see. Yeah, I think you can see it. We have a new root started there. And I thought I saw it now. Yes, this one I, I did break, but probably, I'm sorry, Glenn. <laughs> but we have two new ones uh, branching here as well. So, uh, yeah, that's beautiful. A beautiful time to do a repot, but I had no idea. I just thought I, I, I just have a feeling I want to have them out, I want to have them in a fresh media. I take my chances and we will see. I know I can succeed even though they are not really in their growing mode. Um, if I don't, uh, if, yeah, if I remember, I will put the links up, but I have a few that I did film how I uh, transfer my plants into cell watering. The series um, is called. So if you're interested in how I do that or how I did that, please check them out. But um, yeah, this one is already uh, going for a new root, so that's beautiful. And it had some moss in. I don't like moss, I try to get it out as much as I can. I think we did, uh, I'm sorry, I'm out of uh, screen. <laughs> um, I did get off quite a lot of, here was the moss ball. I did. Uh, Almost completed it, get it out, so that's beautiful. Hydrogen peroxide, here we go again. Spray it. And I like to spray them fairly well in between the roots, in between the bulbs, like I said. So I always keep an eye on them if they dry up for the night. So I will check them later today, just to be sure. So that's something uh, I, I sometimes forget to mention, but it's very important. You don't want to have uh, water inside of those new growths for just if, if, um, yeah, maybe an hour or so. It would be fine, but then it needs to come out. So it's something to keep in mind. Let me, yes, this one is sitting as well. So um, while I was uh, rinsing this one underneath the tap, I thought I'm going to show the last one. Uh, how I rinse them under the tap for those who want to know. So I will do a bit of a different change uh, setup wise and we will have a look at uh, how I rinse the roots underneath the tap just to give you an idea. So we now are at my sink and I have the third orchid here. It's a very uh, beautiful one and I think this one is also at one plant. I try to uh, uh, separate them or check the, if there were multiple plants, but I ha only have one small bulb and I hear a bit of cracking sound just a little bit so I pushed it back uh, because I don't want to break uh, separate it, I don't want to divide it. So, But um, I see quite some uh, new roots on this one, just starting. Let me show it to you guys. Oh, I'm sorry, here's the camera. I hope you can see then all these white bits here are just starting new root tips, so I need to be very carefully. And uh, I also have in, had in the middle some, I think I broke some because I needed to get the sphagnum out as much. But I lift, left uh, the media around these roots and I'm just gonna rinse it because I'm probably otherwise going to damage all of them. And uh, we will need them. But this is a be again a beautiful uh, moment to do a repot, so I think always trust your guts, guts or something. Well, to be honest, I had no idea. I really wasn't expecting new roots yet, but turns out uh, it's the right time. So I will uh, now put on the tap and I will wait for, uh, for a nice temperature. I hope you can still hear me, but I will stop talking for a minute because this makes quite a lot of noise. I apologize for it. But yeah, I need the water for a minute. 
So I'm going to uh, demonstrate how I uh, rinse them underneath uh, the tap. Let me zoom in a little bit. Now you can see if my camera wants to focus, there you go. Quite a lot of uh, new roots just starting and I did try to get a media off as much as I could. So uh, let's get uh, back to the potting table and uh, go from there. So and here we are again. Let me check the rest of the root system before I uh, give it a rinse of hydrogen peroxide. Try to uh, get some bits and pieces off still. So far, so good. Even though they are a little bit discolored. But now again, you know that not always brown roots mean that they are dead. Most of the times they are, don't get me wrong. But uh, I see this uh, a lot with uh, roots that are in my reservoir. Because I uh, use seaweed and sometimes fish mix. Um, and the other stuff I cannot get the name right now but it will uh, leave uh, a little bit of discoloration so I uh, quite often think that my roots are dead and then I repot market and they are just a bit brown up yeah it's like this one this one looks but it's very stiff and hardy nothing wrong with it even even the branches so I'm uh, going to leave this as it is I did, yeah, probably could take a little bit more. Here's a little bit more still. There we go. I did take some roots with it, but I have a little bit too much marsh. I just noticed it. And especially underneath those new roots. I don't like that. So. Just, I'm almost there. I think I always like to take my time and really try to get it the media off as much as I can. But now this is it. A little bit of media is not, not the end of the world. So let's start spraying this with hydrogen peroxide as well. And you guys, I'm going to make this uh, a part one and part two because this is, uh, this is taking uh, always a bit of time and I don't want to overdo it video wise and I have something new. I never, I, I wanted to do a little bit of experience with these uh, three plants. So I will take a little bit more time to uh, talk about that. So if you are interested, stay tuned. For now, thank you for watching and uh, tomorrow I will upload part, uh, upload <laughs> part two of this, this uh, up-putting and re-putting. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.